Welcome to the Inferno Cast. Today's guest is an eighth degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He was the first black belt under Carlos Gracie Jr. and was a fierce competitor that went over eight years without a loss. But you might also recognize him from training Hollywood talent for movies. Please welcome Egan Machado. How are you doing All today, right. sir? I'm doing amazing. Talk to you now. I'm super happy. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm glad you spent time with me. Um, you know, we kind of briefly chatted of we kind of have some connections of, you know, your brother Carlos has just been a, a great friend and mentor for me for so long. And, uh, you know, Bob Bass, who's one of your close friends and students, his brother actually spent some time with me and trained here where I'm at at my gym. So it's kind of one of those typical where, in the where, industry. Where are you locate? Where are you? Uh, in state? Arkansas. Yeah, in Arkansas. Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. So Brian, he was up here for work or something and he's like, yeah, my brother's Bob Bass. And I was thought, what? Like the Bob yes, Bass, yes. you know, just small world, you know. So yes, yes, Bob Bass is my best friend. I know Bob. I met Bob Bass. He used to be a wrestler, and yeah. he and his brother Joey. And um, I remember uh, he's uh, we start training in the garage, and he's a great athlete. It was very easy for him because the background of wrestling. He fell in love with jujitsu very fast. And yeah. Bob Bass, I believe, was the first black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in the United States. Oh, really? Yeah. We yeah. talked about all that whenever we kind of did our episode. But it, he's such a humble man. You know, he's just yes. such a good guy. It's hard to get him to kind of tell all the stories and yes. all the details because yeah. he, he was just so humble. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, to, I wanted to kind of go back to when you were a kid because you were raised in this environment of jiu-jitsu and martial arts and kind of that warrior spirit. When you were coming up as a kid, did you recognize what you were a part of or did it just feel normal? Like this is what kids do. We just train every day. Uh, I have four brothers who rough me up all the time. We uh, and I have my cousin who rough me up too. And I have to to get tough naturally because you're surrounded by boys all the time who like to play and fight all the time. Uh, my relationship started in early age because uh, my mother's sister married the, the Carlos Grace, the founder of the sport of Jiu Jitsu. Carlos Grace was very close to my mother. Like he, he had this amazing relationship. Carlos Grace was a uh, her mentor, almost like uh, her older brother who I advise. And, and growing up, um, I was very close to Carlos Grace. Uh, we have, uh, from early age, he liked me a lot. And I remember I have some issue of uh, uh, asthma. And Carlos Grace was a nutritionist, a doctor, and in basically, he invited me to live with him, to move to from the country to the big city, because he wanted to take care of my health. My and the first thing when I moved to Carlos Grace House, we start practice jujitsu right away. I remember the beginning. I trained under two brothers, Hals uh, Grace and Carson Grace. They used to have a school together. Uh, I remember Hall's Grace, you have schools, this in Copacabana, in Rio de Janeiro. Have, uh, he teaches Jiu-Jitsu Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. And Castle Grace teaches uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays morning. And, but because I was very young, uh, Castle Grace have a big group of kids. Uh, I kind of mix it up. I want to train every day. I go to Castle Grace, I go to Hall's Grace. But when they start getting the, the competition mode, I, uh, I ended up training more focused. Hollis was the one who, who really fought for me to be under his, his umbrella. And Hollis Grace have uh, 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 a brother named Carlos Grace Jr., uh, which at the time, he was like almost his right-hand person at the academy. And Carlos Grace's mission was to train me 100%. And based like uh, as a younger black belt, he stopped focused for me to to get involved in competition. He he be on top of me to be sure I do the right training. He take me to train for Hicks and Gracie. 
they train to train for other cousins and brothers. And basically, I have uh, I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to have a group of people who push me to 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 train hard. The, my job was to 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 follow up the rules and compete. And for me, it was very natural. I never um, felt like a force. I never felt like uh, uh, I just love it. I just um, I love to go to war. I love to have rivals. I love to feel the adrenaline. I love to go to a battle on the mat and have the pleasure to have the victory. That pleasure was what I was addicted. I didn't care much about medals. I was, I want to go to war. And my coach, he, he always asked me, you want to go to war? I said, yeah, get me. I want to fight. It's like almost like you, you start feeling the taste. You're getting good in that sport. You start want to have a taste to challenge yourself to go more and more and more. You have the hunger. You young, you starving for sparring. And basically, I have some of the best sparring. Uh, uh, Horse Grace Academy. I remember I trained three times a day, uh, training early class, at middle of the day, in late at night. And basically, almost six hours a day. And any chance I have, I work out, I swim, I lift the weights, I do whatever I can to try to get uh, myself as a as a better, stronger, faster, more gas on the tank. And I remember when the, the competition was the easy part. When you go to the competition, uh, I have the strong confidence because you spend so much hours training. And I almost have 40 sparrows a day, a yeah, hard sparring. When you go to a competition, you know in your mind, the other guy, no way he have better spar or no way he put more time on the mat, no way he have a better teaching. Uh, in base, I felt above uh, 80% of the guys that go to war. But I, 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 I didn't care about the 80%, I care about the 20%. He, my goal was to, to find the guys, uh, another pit bull, who I look across the mat, and he look in my eye and say, I will beat you up. I said, let's go. Let's go to war. It's not much even about winning or lose. It's about to go to war, to go to the battle, to go to to the gladiators environment, yeah. which um, give you the pleasure I have was the winning, and who give me the happiness, the excitement of accomplishment. And um, I felt very lucky to have the environment and the great teachers I have during my career. Who I believe without them, uh, I don't think uh, I've been in love with this sport like I am. And I'm very lucky because this sport opened opportunities to be here in America, opportunities to keep in contact with my brothers. Because what's amazing about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you have brothers any place you go around the world. I remember in some place in Africa, somebody recognized me. And he said, hey, I have an academy. You want to come and train my brother? It's almost like, that's so cool. You know what I mean? I'm here in Africa, in Kenya. He have this guy who called me brother. He wanted me to go to his academy to train. The sport have this power of a friendship who is very addictive, very interesting because open opportunities to you go to any place in the world in the communication to through the sport is fantastic. That's why I love to travel, to do seminars. I'm very addicted to that. Well, you've mentioned three things that I, I think are extremely intriguing, and I'll cover the first one. So you mentioned you had asthma as a child? Yeah, I have two issues growing up. I have a problem with asthma, and I have a problem with dyslexia. Mm. Uh, the, the problem I have with dyslexia I have uh, I have a problem to speak. I have some words I couldn't sp sp speak. Uh, the sound of R in Portuguese. I use the L to substitute the R. It's like yeah. the sound uh, for me was a little bit different. And when some some words I have a, a problem of pronunciation. The second problem I have is dyslexia. 
when they try read, uh, instead go straight the line, this, the line start going curved down and start reading one line. And pretty soon I dropped two lines to three lines. It was very hard for me as a child to understand uh, uh, I couldn't do well in reading or anything who needed reading because I couldn't go, I couldn't understand why I couldn't go a straight line. I do anything well, but that was a big problem. Whenever, is, yes. I was just going to say, when you were dealing with that, were they struggling identifying what the problem was? Because I know yeah, a lot I'm gonna of tell, I'm going to tell you what helped me. It will blow me. You're going to blow your mind. When they went to, to a specific school, uh, the, the, they explained to me different exercises for me to understand how to focus the line. The one, the, the one of the things we start to explore is to read loud, to exercise my listening. And I start read loud, I start little by little control the line. The second thing is to use my hands to write, uh, uh, write and help the memorization. And basically realize through that method, I start learning how to read better. Uh, my grades went up. And, but uh, sometimes for me, I still have problems to memorize names. Like I remember one time, uh, one of my students, uh, uh, his name is Bob. He had been calling him uh, uh, Peter for two years. But sometimes is is he come to me, hey professor, my name is Bob, and and but sometimes the dyslexia issue I have was sometimes the name I have to repeat uh, hundreds of times to memorize. In base, the way I figured out how to be good in jiu-jitsu, I realized uh, I have to do repetition. A lot of people say, like, let's go to spar, and, and we improve by sparring, which is 80% or almost 90% of the math of jiu-jitsu. Uh, people, let's go spar, let's go to war. We learn enough. And it's a, it's a very easy method. Because it's almost like you put your hand in a place who is hot and automatically you're not going to put your hand over that. It seems like it, when you spar, the guy gets your arm bar, automatically your brain says, don't put your arm over that. This is something who is very good for you improve spars is, is the biggest power to get uh, yourself good in, in the jiu-jitsu. I remember I spar a lot. But for me, uh, one day, the things who help my lot, I repeat techniques thousands of times. I repeat so much uh, uh, my body that techniques come a part of me in a way. And basically, I do that repetition a lot, a lot, a lot, thousand, thousand, thousand times. When I spar and I go to sparring, my game flows stronger because I do so much the techniques, I was able to to super do well. I think the success I have in my career as a competitor uh, before competition, I, I choose like a couple of techniques to do thousand times every day. Thousand times in spar. Thousand times spars. In base, like uh, the techniques, uh, the time of applying the techniques in a competition was short. And yeah. I knew the techniques so well, so detail uh, I, I come a very good technician about because when we repeat thousands and thousands and thousands of time any spar together on top of these uh my result was fantastic i have a little issue just sparring i spar a little bit uh was not enough for me i need the extra drills to to be sure I can't. I couldn't perform the techniques well. It's, it's very different from my brother Jean Jacques. My brother Jean Jacques is, is. I never seen. He, he learned the techniques one time, and goes far, and he start to apply the techniques. He born with the ability. I wish I had this kind of ability, but for me, I have to work twice hard to be able to to perform us the right way. But what this helped me a lot is teaching. Because when they start teaching the techniques, I use my method. I want to be sure 
the guys, okay, before you start wear so hard, let me put you to thousands of, it's a pain in the butt. A lot of my students, but I get good results. I start manufacturing world champions. I start uh, guy amazing results to this kind of style in method. You know what I mean? I think one of the things people have to think of today is not just to learn techniques. But uh, what's amazing about today, the new generation come even with better methods for you to spar, for you to train, for you to improve your jiu-jitsu. Today, the jiu-jitsu change a little bit from my time. Like uh, my time, I use six hours for training. But because today is the evolution of training improve a lot, you don't have to train two hours, three hours. You train almost like an hour and a half or something like that in training smart you're going to get the same results I used to have when they train six hours a day. You know yeah, I mean? it's, you know, I've heard it talked about with immersion training and focus training. And it's almost like what yes. you're talking about is the hybrid where you get both. You're immersed in high-level yes. technique, but it's also extremely focused training because exactly. the evolution of the sport, people understand yes. and comprehend jiu-jitsu at such a better yes. level and your partners do as well. So I, agree 100%. I think that really connects the dot. So the interesting point about what you mentioned on dyslexia and, and overcoming the asthma, it goes to my second question was, you mentioned you love going to war, you love the competition. Do you feel like that passion and that love for the competition came from struggling as a child? Because you know you, you couldn't read very no, well, you struggled no, speaking. I, no, I don't think so. I think the, pro, the, the, the thing, Whatever you do in life is, is about passion and love what you do. I love what I do. Nobody, uh, I was not strong at all. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, it was, a, I, I love to be on the mat. I have this passion uh, to be in the environment. Yeah, I think that was the success uh, to spend six hours a day on the mat. It dealt be forced. I love it. And I think that for me is the secret I had for I spent six hours to improve my, my jiu-jitsu. I think the moment, whatever you do in life, you put your love behind, it, it, it's gonna be, you're gonna be, I remember I was talking to a friend to, to me, you love jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu is gonna love you back. That means you're gonna get good results. But you don't do just because you want to be tough or this or whatever. Do because you love. You know what I mean? Have fun. Enjoy. Be around your friends on the mat. You know what I mean? I think that kind, the energy is amazing. Yeah. And, and then my last thing is you talked about this brotherhood connection that jiu-jitsu has across the world, which you and your family can take a lot of responsibility of creating that across the planet because – you guys came to the U.S. and, and, and spread this, and, and we'll kind of get to that story. But when you talked about the brotherhood and the connection of the family, what is it that you think brings people together with jiu-jitsu that is different than other sports or other types of athletics? What seems to make jiu-jitsu so unique? Uh, jiu-jitsu have unique uh, – I think every martial arts have this brotherhood, this friendship all these, the same basic things. But for some reason, uh, jiu-jitsu is very unique. I don't know why, because you grapple the guy, you connect yourself more, energize with them in some level, I don't know. When you grapple somebody, you come with your brother, you know what I mean? You go to the chess match and stuff like that. It's, it's the coolest thing you can have a relationship between two guys sparring and the chess game is amazing i think it, these help a lot you come closer to people you train every day um, to practice and you become your partner in training it's almost like i was explaining to to people like the the feeling you have when you you have your club or you're part of a club um, it's almost like extension of your own family it's like you have your house, your family, blah, blah, blah. And when you go to the academy, it's your second home. You have your friends, you have your partners in training. It's, uh, it's an amazing environment. Uh, 
it's funny because growing up, I have these guys I grew up training. I still in contact with them today. Even they retire in this and that. Is that the relationship you create, you're never going to forget. Do you think that, you know, because jujitsu, you can't hide. You know, like there's, there's truth on the mats. When you go train and you roll, it's truth. You, you can't hide. There's no facade. You perform or you don't perform. Do you think that maybe that truth that has to be shown in that environment, and like you said, it's their second home where people feel almost safe to be there and to show almost, let people in almost, where it's just like here, I, you know, I can't pretend to be important. I can't pretend to be tough or I can't pretend to be an athlete. I have to be authentic to who I really am because it shows when we train do you feel like that kind of allows people to connect on a deeper level because they can't conceal who they really uh, are? I think in general, martial arts connect people, sport connect people. I think uh, jiu-jitsu is another sport who have a different way to connect people too. But I believe um, what I love about what I do, what I love to be a part is how change people for be a better person, how change people health wise, how change people, you know what I mean, to have a stress release when it comes to training. It's, it's, it's amazing to see how much by seeing to be people come to that kind of how they change. is uh, something I've never seen in anything else. It's, it's so amazing a good instructor, a good teacher who come to the academy, help these people to come, not just a martial artist, but a better father, a better friend, a better husband, a better principles, a better health. It's, it's so much uh, the academy can offer for, for the person to be in the environment, which is a very addictive health environment. You know yeah. what I mean? Do you remember at an age or do you remember a moment in which it was a turning point when you were no longer doing martial arts, but you had become a martial artist? Like you knew that who you were, your identity was this martial oh, artist. Yeah. This happened, this change for me happened when I started teaching. When the, from an athlete, I started have opportunity to teach and see people improve and see people get better. That I think was the the change. Is 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 it's very interesting how um, when you you from practice to become a teacher is a completely 180 change because you start have the feeling to help other people. That I think was an amazing time for me when I start teaching. I fall in love. I was an athlete and fall in love for teaching, and that for me was amazing. I've heard teachers talk about the feeling they got from helping somebody change their life and how that feeling almost became more valuable than winning matches, you know, becoming the champion. Was there a student or a story that that happened to you where you were just in shock at how this was affecting you on an emotional level? Uh, some case, I have people who have a uh, serious problem of health mental health, uh, physical health, and uh, self-confidence problems. And to see how jiu-jitsu help these people, it for me is amazing. That's what I feel glad to be involved in something so positive to other human beings. You know? Yeah, it brings them together and and like you said, it just it transforms people into a, a better version of themselves, or at least gives them yes. an outlet to do so. I agree, I agree with you a thousand percent. When you look back as a competitor, you know, when you were out there, the tournament's trying to win, you, you said that you found your confidence because of the guys you trained with. When you were executing at the high levels, when you were performing and beating the best and, and seeking out that 20%, was there a part of the mental sharpness that was more about knowing what you were capable of versus trying to remember techniques? You know, like what was your performance ritual to be on point? 
Yeah, the only thing for me, my reaction uh, before, I think it start happen like when come close to the competition, probably like the first four days or maybe five days, uh, when the reactions happen for me, I get very quiet. The, the second reaction I start happen, I didn't want to talk to, to people much. I want to be more alone. I want to refocus and concentrate their adrenaline energy for their on the step to fight. And like the day of the competition, my reaction, my hands start sweat and my mouth gets super dry and my legs for some reason shake. Like uh, I almost look like a feeling I'm afraid or something. But uh, by fighting for so many times, I realize how the adrenaline work on me. When my legs shake, I was happy, oh shit, I'm ready. You know what I mean? You, you get to that position, let's go. Let's go to war. You get excited. The adrenaline, the, the hands dry, the mouth dry, the legs shake and say, man, let's go, I'm ready. In that kind of feeling, uh, is the, the reactions, uh, I get, I knew exact every inch about how I feel before uh, the competition. So mm -hmm. a very high level of self-awareness whenever you do. Yes, the adrenaline on your body is amazing. Uh, when you understand what it is, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Uh, I understand every inch how I feel before I step in the game. Uh, what I love about the adrenaline, the adrenaline gives the extra sharp. I was, my eye was open, I'm very sharp for everything I do for don't do mistake. The problem sometimes when you overconfidence yourself and adrenaline is not there, that's when they did some of my mistakes to fight somebody who's not good and I didn't take serious. Yeah, I have a lesson because they maybe score a point or maybe they score a counter takedown and stuff like that. For me, it's like, oh shit. You know what I mean? That's a good to wake up in the middle of the fight and, yeah. uh, and go from there. It's like you hear, um, you know, sometimes MMA fighters, they're like, oh, the fight starts when I get hit in the face. And it's almost like what you're talking about is they almost have to snap out of it so that they can be on point. The adrenaline comes out and they're sharp. When you think back to your competitive career, what was one of your favorite fights? Win or lose, just one of your favorites. Uh, it was like you took so I much. Think he, I think I had so many. But the, I like the one I fought Hickson. That was amazing because to fight your own cousin, which at the time was one of the best guys, and go to a war and fit the best guy on the business. And I was very young at the time. I, I just got my black belt. I was 18 years old when I fought him. And for me, it was a big lesson of strategy. But Hickson, uh, he's a type of fighter who is so sharp as a technician. People don't have no idea. He's a guy who calculate every move he do, he, the time, when to do the techniques. It's something like he, when somebody attacking him like a lion, he wait for the right time to counterattack and recover the fight. And the mistake I did for him, because I was a young fighter and I'm very aggressive, I start very aggressive. He was survived all my attacks. When he start coming, and counter back when he come after me, he was fresh and he had a lot of gas and my gas was low and I couldn't follow his speed and he was fantastic. That's That was the lesson to fight somebody who is more experienced, somebody who have more hours on the mat in competition. And these is things like I never forget. After 40 hits on that, that fight, I improved my jiu-jitsu, I believe, 30, 40% for better. And that's what it's about. You have to learn from every fight. Winning or lose, you come back home, do your homework, get better, get back in competition. And that was uh, one of the fights very special for me. But I have so many fights. It's kind of hard because I have so many wars I went through. It's not fair to tell like which one is the best. It's like every competition end up Bump heads with some tough guy. And 
but uh, I think the Hicks one was a very special for me. Yeah. Well, when you came to America, one, how did you up and decide you're going to go to another country? And then two, uh, how, how was the impact when you got here realizing that there was no comprehension of jiu-jitsu or ground game at all? Uh, for me, it was exciting uh, because in a different country, America, for me, is the, the best country in the world. Uh, it's the most organized country, the most unique, opportunist place on the planet. Today, I'm so happy. You, I feel so blessed to be living here, to be a part of this wonderful country. Uh, I think uh, challenge. Now, I always want to challenge myself to know what I'm made from. You know what I mean? I, my father used to, to tell him, challenge is almost like you write your own book. And base America was a big challenge for me. Was something I was very excited to see how far I can get in this journey to in this unique country who give you all the opportunities for you accomplish anything you want. And for me, I'm so happy today to live in this wonderful country. I love my country more than anything, but I believe the opportunities I have here in this wonderful country is amazing. I think USA is one of the best countries in the world. I've heard it said that sometimes people, they can look at countries like parents. It's okay to have two and you can love them both. Yes. Um, Which is different. It's almost like uh, because people in Brazil is, is 180 different. It's almost like uh, when you go eat, you have different food. Uh, and I think uh, both have amazing flavors. I'm very happy to have opportunity to have both. I like that. I like that a lot. So when you came to America, how was it much culture shock? Was it just very different or was it? Yes, it was, a, was a amazing uh, show difference. You know what I mean? It's, um, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, America is, is so unique. Things uh, like California, New York, some of these major states, the variety of countries, the quantity of countries, uh, when you go to some place like Chinatown, it's like almost like it's so entertaining, so uh, unbelievable, fast compared to other countries. Like things over here happen so fast. You have one idea, you put some work, pretty soon you have a business. I said, man, these in my country take like 10 years to be done. Over here, you did in two months. How? It's, it's, it's amazing. That, this kind of the, the shock, uh, how things function, uh, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it's so, my country is more like a slow motion. It's getting better, but it's not as much fast like the United States. I think the United States is, is, is one of the best places for business uh, in the world for me. So when we moved to Hollywood, how did you get involved with that, the movie, TV show scene? How, how did this come about? I think it was uh, Chuck Norris in the beginning. After this, I ended up getting friends of Steve Seagal, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, uh, and basically I started getting opportunity to meet people behind the scenes of the film, some directors, actors, writers, uh, stunt coordinators, fight choreographers. And little by little, uh, you start a little bit, because I love Hollywood, I love movies, I love uh, to see people perform uh, in front, from the camera. And it's like a Disneyland. You, every movie you watch, you bring you to a world who is so unique. But one of the things uh, who, who I love about you have opportunity to meet people in front of the camera and behind the camera and to see the human side of uh, the celebrities. And little by little, you start working with these people. You start have opportunity to work in, uh, behind the cameras. Some movies are working in front of the cameras. And these, you start have a comprehension of what Hollywood is. And for me, I'm addicted. I love the industry. I'm very glad I have opportunity to train with you. 
hundred different amazing actors, director, producers. And I little by little now, I did my second move as a stunt coordinator. I want to keep going. I want to see how far I can go in the industry. But uh, I love the industry. Hollywood for me is like a, a passion, a pleasure. Something like uh, I have a great time doing it. You know? Yeah. I, my friend Jack Neville, he's a fight uh, choreographer too, usually for like military firearms. Uh, like they had him on Terminator. I think he did something with maybe oh, John Wick for a minute. He's done a few. And something he mentioned that was very unique that I feel like you're hinting at is he talked about how Hollywood is amazing because it attracts excellence out of people. He's like, everybody that shows up to do a film is usually the most excellent in their specific field, whether it be lighting, makeup, choreography, acting. And he said, when you have that many people together that just carry a high standard, and believe in just absolute performing at their best. He said it creates something special. Would, would you feel like you've been in that environment or you've noticed that or how has that affected you? Yeah, I think everything you have to understand what it is. For me, I still doing my baby steps. I think I got, I got bigger comprehension about the industry, about action. I have opportunity to work in a company called 8711 who for me is the best company action film in the world today. But I have a chance to meet a lot of amazing other people from the industry who do action films. And to understand the steps to do an action film, what's behind the scene, to, to get like a movie like Fast and Furious or Marvel films, what's behind the scene is something amazing. Thousands of people work behind the scenes to get this move for two hours for people to watch. That for me is like, wow, this is unbelievable. It's amazing to see, to be a part of uh, this amazing journey, fantasy, in imagination, to be involved in this amazing industry. Do you feel like your creativity from jujitsu is part of what you enjoy of the Hollywood life because it's like a creative expression? No, I think Hollywood opened doors because a lot of the friends I got from this industry, they come as students first. Like guys like Ashen Kutcher, uh, we come friends today. I love the guy. Uh, guys like Charlie Hooner, this sense of Arnett, uh, Joel Kidman, Robocop, uh, Suicide Squad, you know what I mean? Uh, Scott Eastwood, who training at Baja Grace in San Diego. Was a purple belt, amazing guy. I'm friend of Francesca uh, Eastwood, and guys like uh, Ke uh, Toby Cabell, who did a uh, rock and roller. What a great guy! He, a variety of people who've been going through the academy. Uh, like uh, one of my really good friend today, Frank Grillo, have a TV show about MMA right now in Netflix, The Kingdom. This guy is the coolest guy alive. He's a phenomenal boxer. He's a guy who is the real deal. He's an amazing actor, amazing producer. Uh, it's amazing to, when you get to know some of these amazing guys, like directors, like a come friend of Mel Gibson, who for me is my hero. Uh, I have a opportunity to meet Stallone, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Clint Eastwood. I've come friends of Oliver Stone, and for me, it's so amazing uh, to get to know these people as an artist. It's almost like you talk to Picasso, you know what I mean? You talk to these guys, Oscar winner directors, like uh, I was talking to, I have the opportunity to talk to Mel Gibson about Braveheart. For me, it was amazing. I watched that movie hundreds and hundreds of times and have opportunity to, to talk to the director. And for me, talking about the movie, that is amazing experience. And to be involved in this industry, through Jiu-Jitsu, have opportunity to train all these amazing people, is amazing. Uh, I feel like uh, Hollywood is another environment who little by little, uh, I love, I love the environment. I love to see the movie. I love to go to the red carpet. I love to go to after party. I always enjoy to talk to these artists who do 
amazing movies to entertain us. And um, for me, it's, uh, it's a good environment. I have fun yeah. because I have a school in Beverly Hills and to, to have opportunity to connect these people uh, through jiu-jitsu is amazing. It's almost like you have this artistic expression of creativity when you're on the mat. Yeah, when fantastic. you're around people that do the same thing with film and art and, you know, and writing stories, it's just, it's very similar. And I've noticed that with people that, that deal with Hollywood. When you're dealing with people that are highly successful individuals, you know, like some of your friends, people that you train as students, do you see a different level of performance out of them on the mats? because they perform at such high levels in other they, aspects they, of their life? You have two types of Higgins Machado. Have one who outside the mat is your friend, is easy going, have fun, but have the coach Higgins Machado. When you step on the mat, I don't, I don't care who you are. The only thing I focus to see the person head, the person heart, and the person body. If my goal is to connect this triangle, body, soul, and the mind. I have a chance to con con build, connect through, through jiu-jitsu. He will be an amazing person because all three is connected. He basically, the tools I have from jiu-jitsu to have a chance to push them to get this connection is it, it, a lot of change of, to be humble, a change to be focused, a change for confidence, change to improve the health. It's amazing because the moment you see them as a human being and they train on the mat, that's how we're going to get the results. It's almost like to be a good teacher, you have to have a good student. The moment you tell them, hey, now everything you do is outside. Leave your ego outside. Let's focus on your training. And that's what I love to do. That's why I'm very good. And that's why my success in the industry is because my teaching, I follow this kind of philosophy. And when you meet people on the pure side as a human being, that's how you connect to them as a friend. And I think the Jiu-Jitsu helped me to create a lot of my, my friends in Hollywood because you get closer to them as a human. You know what I mean? Not because they are a big star. I don't care about that. I care about to get to know them as a human being. And that's what uh, is amazing to have opportunity to teach some of these amazing stars. Yeah. I, you know, and I was talking to a friend of mine who's an actor and we were kind of discussing that because I was saying that, you know, you enjoy working with people sometimes at that level because it's not because they're famous or they, you know, they've done this movie or they're well off it's because their level of performance and their work ethic has gotten them that far that whenever they become a jiu-jitsu student, they treat it the same. They work just as hard. Whatever you ask, they do, and they do more. They come prepared. They are just so bought in. And I just feel like sometimes you get a better result from that type of personality because excellence is just part of who they are. And, and they come out and they just achieve and they perform and they do well, especially when you demand a lot of them do you think that you're demanding excellence in a lot of people has helped the relationships? Uh, you have to have a, a sense. I call the sense. The sense you have to know where to push the line. You have to be careful to don't overdo or over push the line. You have to get a sensibility uh, as a instructor to understand when to push. Because sometimes you don't want to overdo it and they get too tired or overdo it, they get scared, or you have to have to play the line. And sometimes a good instructor, this come by experience and time. When, example, in my case, I have opportunity to train close to over 10,000 people. I did over uh, 730 seminars in over 100 countries in the last uh, 36 years. And I have trained over 60 world-class athletes, get titles and different from UFC to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to no Gi Jiu-Jitsu. This kind of experience when you, you come, you, you teach that much, you get the sensibility very sharp. When they get a student to coach them, it's almost like I can coach them and close my eyes and I know exactly what, 
when to push you, what I need to do with that person. And that's why the Academy of Beverly Hills for me was a dream to, to create this ability, to enhance this ability as a coach. And, uh, and for me, uh, is, I'm very happy to explore different areas. You have a chance to, to coach athletes, you have a chance to coach uh, yourself, you have a chance to do this and that. But you come to an area and start coach people who don't want to compete, people who want to have fun, who want to improve themselves in different areas. And through Jiu Jitsu, you get that. You know what I mean? And yeah. for me, it's almost like I try uh, different methods of teaching. I have the competition method. I have the one who builds the confidence. I have the one to connect all the three points, the soul, the mind, and the body. And all these little things, you, you, get the, you have to have the sensibility to know what the student wants by feeling. And I'm become very sharp on that. That's why I've been very lucky to have all these clientels and, and yeah. keep have more clientels coming, more opportunities happen. Yeah. Well, I have two final questions. The first yes. one is, who were your major influences and coaches and what did they really teach you about life? Um, the number one was my father. My father was uh, one of the most amazing human beings I ever met. He taught me so much about life, about respect, about discipline, focus, about humanity. Uh, the other guy was my my uncle, Carlos Gracie. He taught me about health, about, you know what I mean, to become a warrior, to become this gladiator, and to become a part of this amazing history in this sport. Uh, my coach, Carlos Gracie Journey, doubted him. I not be here today. I learned it. He was the driver of my success in many different ways. My cousin, Crawling Grace, the long hours we talk about life and spirit, spirit, spirituality, about uh, history, about the family. I learned so much about Crawling growing up, Crawling Gracie, one of the, 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 the kids of Carlos Gracie. And my, my best friend growing up was Helium Grace, who we go out together. Uh, I mean, the first girls I, I going out in my life, Helium Grace was right next to me. We have this childhood uh, of a lifetime of a friendship. And, uh, it's amazing. I have so many people, uh, my brother, uh, Carlos, Jorge, Jean-Jacques, and John, uh, it's another group of uh, people who, without them, are not going to be here today because the Machado success come not just one brother, but it's a group of the brothers who connect to each other through the Machado. And I think he, uh, the support I get from them is beyond something to a different level. It's like anything I do relate to in my life, in the sport, in jiu-jitsu, my brother always pushed me, motivate me. And it's very good to have this kind of support. Like uh, in my brothers, I owe that a lot to them. And I think the, uh, that's some of the people uh, have to say thanks to the, all the support and love. And, and I think you have so many people later Always. Uh, I think thanks, but that's some of the main people in my life. Yeah. If you could only give your children three pieces of advice to be happy, successful, and find fulfillment, what would that advice be? Number one, love what you do. Number two, write your own journey in your life. Enjoy every second because I promise you you follow this principle your life is going to be amazing that's awesome wonderful you've, you've been such an influence on the industry I mean you're an absolute legend within the jiu-jitsu circles but beyond martial arts you've, you've really you, made a name for yourself helping people and inspiring others to be better is there anything you would like to finish with today 
uh, I'd like to say thanks to you to put together this podcast interview and conversation. And uh, I'm very happy to talk to somebody who have a passion about the sport and listen to you talk before the interview is uh, very interesting. I think he enjoy life. You know what I mean? Try to be a good person. Try to go after your dreams. And because every second you you moving forward on your life is what's important. You know what I mean? What's past, what's on the behind is already in the past. Just focus all your energy to conquer your future, your present and your future because you think that if we a good spirit, a good heart. I believe life will be so good for you. Uh, that's my advice. Uh, Absolutely. Future people. Well, thank it's, you very much for your time. I appreciate you uh, kind of sharing your stories with us and we'll definitely be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Have a good night, my friend.